Hey, Vieter this just started this weekend because of your videos. I'm a Lotro fan. I'm very happy so far with New World. Nice game. Thanks for your videos. You are welcome. Honestly, I haven't found anybody who isn't having fun. The only people I've seen who are grumpy about things are some of the PC players. Um, where I've seen some commentary related to, oh, it's the same crowd. It's the crowd who thinks that anytime a game developer publishes a press release, like they, they read things into the press releases. And when those things don't come to fruition, they tell, they claim that the developer is lying. So I've seen, I've seen, you know, 30, 40 comments for people, angry PC players who are like, Amazon promised, and they give you a link, right? And they point you to some blog post from three years ago or two years ago, or whatever, when Amazon made this statement about what they were working on. And it says something like, um, you know, big changes coming for the PC crowd. Um, we're working on new content for them. And people assume, here's the thing, because we saw this with Shattered Space. There are some people who legitimately don't consider quests to be content. They don't consider dialogue. We literally got told that during Shattered Space. Dialogue is not content. Some people think that quests are not content. I want new gear. I want a new gear score. I want more loot. I want more tears. That's what the, those people are the one who are complaining that New World Eternum doesn't have anything new. And those are the ones who claim that New World Amazon lied. Amazon promised that we were getting all these new updates to the PC, and instead of updates to the PC, we got console edition. We got robbed. Amazon lied. No, you just misinterpreted because they totally updated the PC version with a whole slew of new stuff. You've got a new raid. You've got new cutscenes, a brand new main storyline quest. You've got new archetypes. You've got a new starting area. You've got a brand new end game zone. You've got new activities. They added tons of new stuff, and they added crossplay, and they added console editions. Like there was so many. This is a massive update. But I didn't get new gear scores. <laughs> they lied. Amazon lied. What's up, Pippin? Oh, I'm, am I waking you up with my mocking of the Reddit crowd? Yeah. Are we are we mocking the Reddit trolls? Yes, we are. She's a good girl. Let's mock the Reddit trolls. Yes! It's how we make a living. We take that clickbait and we turn it into cash. Cha-ching! <laughs> Milo says, have you ever tried fully modded Skyrim? Nope, I don't play with mods. The game never had any issues with population, Andrew. But obviously, putting it on console, it brought hundreds of thousands of new players into the fold. Like, crossplay is a win for any game. Suddenly we have, now we have Xbox players, PlayStation players joining the PC players. That's a win. That's never a bad thing. It's, a, it's also a very interesting decision on, on Funcom's part to launch Dune Awakening as PC only and then bring it to consoles later. Because they're doing the same thing New World did. They're going to bring it to PC first, then they're going to come to consoles later. And I guarantee you the same people who bitch and moan about how, oh, we were just beta testers for New World for three years while they were working on this. And Baldur's Gate 3 was in early access for three years, only on PC. I know because I was there for the whole three-year process. Played it on PC only. The moment it came out on Xbox, I bought it for the Xbox as well. Did I go out there and make an angry post about how, oh, fuck you, Larry, and you took my money and, and made me buy the game twice, and I was your beta tester for three years? Just fucking sucks. No, I literally signed on to be a beta tester and to have fun in early access and to have fun with the PC only launch. And as soon as they made it on Xbox, I went, Sold! I'll buy me another copy because I loved the game and I want to support the devs. Same thing here. I have no. I own the PC version. I also now own the PS5 version. I could play the PC version for free if I wanted to. No monthly sub, but I have a PS Plus subscription that I run all the time, so why not play it on the PS5? I want to put more hours on the PS5. 
Bite of Life says lots of complaining from PC players. Yeah, do you, and then they brag about their play hours. I know. You know what the best thing you can do, though, Bite of Life? Is you can go into your chat settings as a console players, and you can turn those players off and mute them. And you never have to see them in a single comment whatsoever. Let them cry into the void. I'm so salty that I beta tested for three years. You didn't beta test shit. You played a game for three years. They added a new main storyline and launched it on the consoles. You didn't lose your progress. They didn't change. You didn't lose your character. D the game didn't go anywhere. Like the same game you've been playing for the past three years on PC still exists today. It's now a much more polished version with three years of content and now you have more people to play alongside with. But the Steam charts... Dead game, bro. Dead game, bro. Game over. I know, Pippin. What do you want to say? Do you want to add anything to that, Pippin? Yeah? Are we making fun of the trolls this morning? Yeah, we are. Yes. What's up? And we're going to continue making fun of the trolls. Yes, we are. Because they don't know what they're saying. No. Muting in a chat is a marvelous thing, says Hobo. It is. What's up, Nick2? I'm having a great time. This game is way better than it was at the launch of the game. And I think that um, if you play any MMO or any live service game, the game is going to make changes over the course of the first few years. But this, uh, you know, I bet, yeah, exactly, Transcend. I So this is Transcend's comment over on YouTube. I bet those complainers haven't bothered to play the new main series questline because if they would, if they had, they would have seen the future tease cutscene, which sees what's coming on the, which I have not seen yet. I can't wait to see the future tease cutscene. And also, they haven't actually played the game. Like I said today, we're like 42 hours into streaming. And I'm only level 54. And I've still got a ton left. It's got to be a 50-hour playthrough minimum for the new main series quest. And and that's literally new content, even for PC players. Yes, there are elements of the quest line that remain the same from before, but it's woven into this new tapestry of cutscenes and animation and quests, which completely change the narrative and give us a whole new reason for the island existing and everything else. So it's a it's a completely different game, uh, a pretty completely different quest, I should say, from when it launched. Rolf says, "I love it when you make fun of trolls. I, it's it's a lot of fun." Hobo Star coming in with a five dollar super chat. <laughs> Mocking the Steam player. The Steam player numbers count, man. Dead game. Yeah, Mr. Neil, let's see. I, I, I don't mind it being on. I hardly ever pay attention to it because my head's over it. So I honestly don't even read it. I just, I'm going about, going about my business. It is going well, Belnoth. Bite of life of Steam charts. That's rich. I know, man. Like, we talked about this during yesterday's video on um, the band. Like, the one-hit wonders and stuff. and Hit songs. Like, um, people who only pay attention to Steam charts don't actually have access to anything. That's an, that's an, it's an estimation. And it can be, you know, if it only has 10 people playing, that could be an indicator of something being bad. But... Any live service product that's been out for a while, um, when you look at the daily concurrence, that's only a fraction of the picture. We were because here's the thing, like Lord of the Rings Online, I have a running sub to that game. I play once a week. Sometimes I skip. So if you were to try to find me on the daily Steam charts, I'm not there. And there are a shitload of players who are lifetime subscribers or annual subscribers for Lord of the Rings Online who do not and will not nor will they ever show up in the daily steam charts because they don't play every day they play once a month or once every two weeks or once a week so you can't 
completely judge a game based off of Steam charts. It can be an indicator of certain things, but if a game has 3,000, 5,000 daily concurrence, more than likely they're probably running 50,000. I'm making a BS arbitrary estimation based off of things that I've seen with other games like EverQuest 1, EverQuest 2, etc. Um, other games that have, say, three to 5,000 players playing daily. When you look at the investor calls, they tend to have around 35 to 50,000 monthly subscribers. And if you look at the free-to-play players, it's usually around 75 to 100,000. So, you know, there's there's so many things we just don't know. So I never go off Steam numbers. Um, plus, I can't stand Steam because they let people review bomb games. So I just Steam is not an indicator of anything to me. But... I'm having a great time, that's all I care about. <laughs>